In this video, we're going over Windows and Linux again. For the last time, until the next time. So, when it comes to Windows and Linux, I get this question all the time. How easy is it to switch from Windows to Linux? And too many people in the community, I'm not gonna name any names, have said it's easy. And for a lot of users, that is far from the case. It's only use, it's only easy for someone that doesn't know Windows at all, or very little, maybe how to launch a web browser, and that's about it. To do the same in Linux is actually a lot easier, so that type of novice in Windows will have a lot easier time and a lot better time in Linux because less chance of viruses. Uh, occasionally, if they're using like Chrome, they might get like a bad extension. But other than that, I mean, when it comes to Linux, it is a lot better experience for a, a beginning user. But let's go into the more advanced power users or your gamers and, and those that have used Windows for years and years and years, and then they're looking at Linux. What does that look like? What do we tell them? Or if you're one of those users and you're watching this video, what do you need to do? Well, the very first thing is look at your programs that you use. Which ones can you convert to a, a freeware Linux alternative? Uh, like I would say my biggest conversion that I've done to date when I went from Windows of 20 years to Linux is Photoshop. I absolutely fell up Photoshop. It's a great program. As much as I hate Adobe, I gotta admit, Photoshop's pretty pimp. But when I came to Linux, I saw that GIMP was available. And I was like, okay, I've used GIMP a couple times on Windows, but I never really liked it because it's so different. And it's gotten a lot better. But at the same token, if you look at my first 30-day challenge, which I made a whole year ago using like a webcam and my Yeti mic, I got to say, I think I mentioned I hate GIMP five to ten times almost every single video because I was just such a I, – I missed Photoshop so much when I came over to Linux. And now I can't live without GIMP. You know, I was on a Windows PC the other day and I needed to do a graphic edit that actually had Photoshop. I pulled it up and I was just like, oh, man, I've forgotten so much. And instead of just sitting there kind of hacking around, I was like, ah, forget it. I just closed out of Photoshop and, and installed GIMP and did the edits there. Because I've gotten so accustomed to using scripts and other things to make things a lot easier for me. Uh, where Photoshop, it's just done a lot differently. The same thing's capable in Photoshop. I'm never going to say one of these products is better than something that's been developed for literally 30 years. But uh, it is getting to the point where it's it's very comparable for uh, an average user that needs to do basic edits. But to get to the point where you're co as comfortable in GIMP as you are Photoshop takes months. And I don't want to blow smoke up your ass and just say, hey, this works great. Because it doesn't. And it's such a hard process to begin, but it can be done. And it is really nice once it's done. Then you don't have to worry about all the Adobe shenanigans with uh, subscription models and uh, constantly ever-evolving fees and charges for, for that software. I don't have to worry about any of that anymore, which is really nice. But there are other things that I miss and occasionally have to use, like Adobe Pro, Adobe Acrobat Pro, I do use. And for that, I have not found a suitable substitute based on like third-party tools and uh, like bait stamping, all these other really advanced features I use all the time in Adobe that simply no other freeware alternative actually has. So when it comes to PDF editing, I usually launch a Windows-based VM and edit my PDFs still to this day after being on Linux for almost a full year now. So I just want to go ahead and throw that out there. Now, as far as Microsoft Office and all that, uh, I pretty much don't even mess with that stuff much anymore. I usually am using either an online counterpart. You can, you know, when it comes to mail, you got Gmail, you got Outlook Online. If you're using Office 365, you have a whole bunch of other options. So Microsoft Office is no longer really that big a deal for me. I've pretty much switched off that. I don't really need to boot back into Windows to access and edit documents and that type of stuff. I've basically completely transformed off of that. Now, some people use LibreOffice. Some people use FreeOffice. Some people use OpenOffice. 
Uh, all these are available on Linux and are great. And you also have all the browser-based ones. So if you're really a big Microsoft Office fan, you can go and use Office Online. And it works great. It works just as well as uh, using the ones in you know, Windows. Now, there are certain caveats to that, such as macros and some other really, really advanced features that most people don't use. Uh, but if you're doing like VB scripting and things like that and then attaching those macros directly into your uh, Word documents and Excel documents, yeah, you're going to miss that. But I've grown accustomed to not having it now, and I really am happy where I'm at. But it is an adjustment period. I, again, I can't emphasize this much enough. If you're a vet in the community and someone's a Windows Power user and you're trying to convince them to convert over to Linux, do not tell them it's easy because it's not. It is drastically different. The two operating systems function differently, and there's a lot of programs they will miss. But you can convert. The other aspect of Windows and Linux that I have absolutely loved on Linux is the gaming. So I've always been an advocate of Linux gaming ever since I started on this path. And when I started, it was drastically different than it is now. It's still not perfect. It's still uh, certain games are a little hacky. But overall, it has gotten it so much better. But if you're going to do gaming on Linux and you coming from Windows, go to ProtonDB.com. If you're a heavy Steam user, all your Steam titles are listed in Proton.DB. And it'll be listed platinum, gold, silver, and then anything under silver, it's either bronze and bort, I think are the two other categories. That usually means it's not really for you. Bronze usually means it runs like crap. Borked means it won't even launch. So go to proton.db, and I'll, I'll put the link down here as well, and check out your games on Steam. Before making that jump to Linux completely, uh, make sure your Windows-based Steam games are compatible, checking out their compatibility in proton.db. Now, other games that aren't in Steam, like World of Warcraft and League of Legends and Fortnite and Epic Games and Origin Games and those types of things... It depends. So look on Lutris.net. Again, I'll look and link in the description and also put it in the tag here. Go to this website, type in your game, see what the install experience is like. In most cases, I would say it's as simple as installing Lutris on the actual Linux box you're gaming on and then just going to their site and clicking install. The install process actually becomes easier than installing the game on Windows in some instances. So that's a very powerful thing, but again, mileage varies depending on the games you play. So look before you leap. Make these planned adjustments and seeing how it is. And I always recommend from a Windows Power User perspective, keep that dual boot so you can boot back into your Windows and you can boot back into Linux. As you'll slowly start to transition more into the Linux side. And now I usually go months without actually booting back into my Windows segment because a lot of times when I need to do just something really quick, I'll launch a, a virtual machine in Linux that has Windows on it and then just do a quick PDF edit or whatever I need out of that proprietary Windows program to actually boot back fully into the Windows system. There's very few things I actually need that for. The one thing I still use mine for is the Oculus Rift and all my games on the Oculus. So whenever we have like a VR night here at the house, I'm pulling that out. So I would still boot into Windows for that. But usually when I do that, I am updating for hours. It is ridiculous. And this is with all the deferment upgrades, uh, updates, and with actually stripping this down. Now, I could completely disable updates, but I don't like doing that. I still like to try and get as many security updates as I can because Windows is a lot uh, less stable than, let's say, its Linux counterpart. But I do find all these updates and all this hassle when I boot back in. So after going about a month and booting back into my Windows partition, it's a reminder to me why I don't really use Windows anymore. It, it's so bloated in the update cycle. It's just so aggressive that it makes for such a horrible experience on the end user and why so many people look at Linux as an alternative and it can be a viable alternative. But I wanted to make this video just so you can remember if you're a Windows user coming to Linux, plan it out. Try to make as much plans to actually look at the software you can bring too many times people switch to Linux and then go, hey, how do I launch my Photoshop? How do I launch the Creative Suite from Adobe? 
how do I launch my Microsoft Office? And I've messed with this stuff. And yes, I know you can get older versions working in Wine, but a lot of times they don't work all that well. They crash too often. It's just not a very good experience at all. That's why I'm like, hey, if you're going to use those things, I would just spin up a Windows virtual machine, use them in that, or dual boot and boot back into your Windows to use those specific pieces of software. However, there have been really bright spots. Once you get through all this, one, you don't have any of the cost of the software upkeep. You don't have to mess around with your system updates as much because Linux just works a lot better. And then really, some of the programs, the free and open programs, actually end up being a lot better, in my opinion, for the average user. So for me, I was using like Premiere. I think I even used Femora a little bit. And I got to say, I don't miss those programs at all. I've been using Caden Live and some people can, you know, say, hey, Caden Live crashes too much, but I've literally found certain versions that work really well for me. And it almost never crashes anymore on me because I, I get that sweet spot. I find that sweet spot and I just launch that version. And I just don't ever update it. And it is awesome. It's such a great thing for my production machine inside. So I am constantly just churning out videos using Caden Live. Everything in this channel is done for the past 300 videos has been done in Caden Live. So Caden Live video editor, I, I love it. I absolutely love it until it crashes after working on a project for like 30 minutes. But that doesn't happen very much. And I do actually really love this video editor. I'm able to do some just incredible things so quickly uh, that it has made this YouTube channel possible. Because in the comments section, I always get, how in the hell are you making so many videos? How are you editing and shooting this many videos and constantly doing it on a daily basis when it's just you doing the video ideas, doing the actual shooting, doing all the filmography and the edits and all the stuff that goes into making a video? And I got to say, it's a lot of the Linux-based stuff that has made this possible. I couldn't imagine doing this on a Windows-based system. There's so much things that change constantly in Windows. There's updates that happen. There's uh, programs that need to update before you can use them again. All these different aspects of Windows that is just horrible. And on Linux, I have that machine in there. I don't think I've updated in the last couple months. And I can just know every single time I walk up to it, bam, load all my files in and just start cranking out work product. It has made me so much productive. So a big thank you to Linux. Doesn't matter which one I'm using. A lot of people are like, well, which one are you using? I'm using Fedora on my laptop. I'm using Arch on my studio. And I'm using Debian on the inside. And really, it just depends on the person. But when you find what you need, and each version is awesome. I love each one. And I could use each one as a daily driver for those three. I have to say, it has changed my life. It has made me productive. It has made this YouTube channel possible. But at the same time, I know it's not an easy thing to switch from Windows to Linux. And you have to plan it out. You have to consider all the things that happen. And there's going to be hiccups. There's going to be things that you didn't foresee and hurdles to overcome. But is it worth it? Absolutely. But let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. A big shout out to my patrons. Without you... I couldn't make videos like this one, and I'll see you on the next one.